Good morning, Southside, and happy Father's Day to all our fathers and father figures that are joining us this morning. We love you, we appreciate you, we're thankful for you, and we're excited to celebrate with you this morning. Be on the lookout at the end of the service for a special Southside tribute to all of our dads and our church and extended family. Uh, we're excited to worship with you and celebrate with you this morning. As we get into worship this morning, we've got a great set of music that we really believe is going to encourage encourage you uh, and build you up this morning as we celebrate Jesus prevailing and overcoming the world and giving us the power and the ability to overcome evil and the world that we live in as well. We're thankful for our pastor and the message that he's going to bring to us to be encouragement to dads and to the church as a whole this morning. I know it's coming straight from his heart and I know it's going to be a blessing to you as well. We're so thankful that you've chosen to join us this morning. We're so thankful that you're spending your Sunday worshiping together with us. We're looking forward to joining together live in person at the church again very soon. So be on the lookout for announcements about that in the coming week because we're excited to get back together with you, church. It's coming soon. We're excited to see what God's going to do. I pray that he will keep preparing your hearts as he's preparing ours to come together and worship together very, very soon. We hope you're blessed this morning. Let's get in and worship together. Good morning, Southside. Hope everyone's doing well this morning. Let's praise the Lord together. Oh, I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb till I met you. I was breathing but not alive. All my failures I tried to hide. It was. Till I met you, you called my name, and I ran out of that grave, out of the darkness, into your glorious day, you called my name. Call my name, and I ran out of that grave. 
lives in me, the same spirit that sets men free lives in me, the same Jesus that rose again lives in me. And if you're with me, who could stop me? The same power that calmed the sea lives in me. The same spirit that sets men free lives in me. The same Jesus that rose again lives in me. And if you're with me, who could ever? of hell and the gates will not prevail against you against you and you will not be denied you have made your church alive and you will You'll always fight for us to die and poured out for all mankind. God's only Son, the perfect and spotless One. He never sinned and suffered as if He did. Oh 
overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Everyone overcome. We will overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Everyone overcome. We will overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our sin, overcoming death, the devil in the grave. We have victory in you. And God, we thank you today, particularly for our fathers, our physical fathers here on earth, Lord God, whether they're still with us or they're home with you. Lord, we thank you for the heavenly example that you give to each one of us dads. Father, I pray that as we honor our fathers today, that we would honor first and foremost you, O oh God. That we would remember that you're our Heavenly Father. Lord, I pray that as we're looking to gather again physically here soon, Lord, I just pray that you would keep the devil at bay. Lord, I pray that you would bless your people Bless us as we're able to meet, slowly but surely. Lord, I just pray that you would take this pandemic far, far away. Lord, that we do not see a second rise up of it, and that as we're gathering more and more fully, that it can be exactly that. Lord God, I look forward very much so to having zero restrictions again. Father, we love you. We thank you so much for what you're doing in our lives and what you're doing in our community, despite all the chaos and crazy that's been going on. Lord, we pray all this in your son's name. Good morning, Southside Baptist Church, and welcome to worship this Father's Day Sunday. We are glad that you are able to tune in through our social media ministries already this morning. It's been a joyous day of worship, focusing on the Lord, and uh, through the Zoom chat, small group meetings this morning, uh, which really is how we've been doing Sunday school with many of our classes 
then uh, to the worship that Steadfast just led us in, and uh, what a great time we've had worshiping the Lord in music and song, and now we're going to turn our attention to worshiping in God's truth. And so I want to invite you to open your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 5, but before we do that, we want to honor and recognize dads, and uh, we've got some very special dads that uh, are dear to us in our own church family, uh, and then there are men that are father figures that we celebrate as well. And so, uh, to all our dads out there, I say happy and blessed Father's Day to you. We thank God for you and your God-given role leading your families, leading your church family and your community to know, love, and serve Jesus Christ. And so, um, in light of that. Uh, what we would normally do is recognize, recognize all the dads and the granddads uh, that were in God's house on Father's Day. Uh, because we can't do that, kind of like we did on Mother's Day, we want to recognize and celebrate uh, with a few gifts for some select dads uh, today. And so uh, I'm going to ask our youth pastor, Austin Ron, to come. And Austin, I'm glad that we can do this like we did with the moms uh, on Mother's Day because that was a hit. Uh, oh, yeah. So we gave away, I think, five gift cards to moms on Mother's Day. The first four were $50 cards. The second, no, the last one was a $100 gift card. That's we're right. going to do that with the dads. That's and right. So, it's going to be great. Uh, we invited you through social media on the church Facebook page uh, to put your favorite dad's name in. And, and I don't know if some guys got in there twice. I don't, right. I don't know. Maybe. No way. No, there's no way that would happen. You didn't have anything going yeah. on. But don't go table. try to do it now because it's okay. too late. Yeah, it's too it's, late. It's now. too late. What's happening it's right now? It's definitely too late now. But I'm, <laughs> I asked Austin to come. He's going to help me. And we're going to select some dads who are winners uh, right here on Sunday morning compliments of Southside Baptist Church. Now, all dads in my book. Every uh, dad's a winner, Every right? dad's a winner, right? Especially on Father's Day, I would hope. But okay? they don't all get gift but, cards. Yeah, but they're not all going to get a <laughs> gift card. Like, you know, normally we'd have a, a really cute, nice, you know, appropriate gift for all of them. Sure. But in, in lieu of that. Well, just it's like something to look forward to coming back and worshiping together, right? Right, yeah. exactly. So here we go. Let all me right. hold it. Oh, you're going to you hold think, it for me. Right? Okay, all right. So did, did you shake them up? I off? shook it. You're all putting right. all the pressure on all me right. now. Cool, you just, cool. Well, you're picking, so right. I don't get accused of rigging right. this I'm not thing. even looking. Look, they, right. they can see it. I'm not Dad looking. Dad number, number one. one. Number one for the first $50 gift card is Joe Diego. Joe Diego, congratulations. You get an extra special $50 Amazon gift card on Father's Day. Love it. All right, number two. Dad number two. Skip Walls. Skip Walls. Congratulations. congratulations. You get a $50 Amazon card for being part of our extended Southside family. Praise God. Love it. Love it. Congratulations. Dad number three. Bob Velez. Bob Velez, congratulations. Congratulations. You also part of the extended family here at Southside. Get a $50 gift card today. All right, this All is right. what? Number this is number four. four. This is our last $50. Number four, last $50 last gift dollar. card right here. You ready? All right, I'm, I'm Wait ready. Wait a minute, we don't need a recount? Oh, that's right, it's just We names. don't live in okay. Florida, it's fine. Good, okay. Dave Sharp. Dave Sharp, congratulations, congratulations. brother Dave. Happy Father's Day. And uh, you are a, a select member of a $50 gift card club now. So praise God. It's very exclusive. Amen. All right. All right, so shake this one up really I good. I wish Connor was up here to do the drum roll, you know. Uh, but he's already departed to, to listen to the, to the message. Uh, yeah. But if we could do a drum roll, we yeah. would. We'll shake it up really so, good. This is right, the grand prize. This, is, right. a, this cool. is the $100 cool. baby right here. All right? The $100 mix, baby. Mix it up great. All right. All right, are, are you guys ready? Because I'm excited. Here we go. All this right, is, this is how we're celebrating dads today, cool, so let's cool. make it happen. I'm going to reach down in here. I'm pulling one straight out of the middle. All right, all right straight out go. of the middle. And we got, there it is. There's a side that is on. Logan Snyder. Logan Snyder. Brand new dad right over there. Congratulations. One of our newest dads. Only appropriate. Right, the, gra that the grand that prize to the brand new dad. Grand Love it. prize winner as a new dad. Congratulations, Logan Snyder, on a $100 Amazon gift Congratulations. card. Congratulations. Uh, for those of you men that just won uh, the gift card, we will get that out to you this upcoming week. Congratulations to you and congratulations to all our dads because yeah. I know your wives and your family and extended family are going to make Father's Day special for you today. And uh, so thank yep. you, Austin. I appreciate you helping yes, me sir. with that. 
And uh, I know that's going to be a blessing as they enjoy uh, celebrating Father's Day. So praise the Lord for that. All right, I invited you to turn your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 5. I've titled the message today in an appropriate way, Fathering Wisely, Fathering Wisely. And uh, what we're going to learn from Ephesians chapter 5 verses 15 down through verse uh, 21 is we're going to learn how God expects us as dads specifically to father wisely. And then generally we're going to learn how God expects us as believers to walk wisely in God's truth. And so uh, I want to remind you, if you're ready to worship, do the thumbs up for your amens, okay? So if you're ready to worship, send a thumbs up emoji right now, okay? Um, I was tempted to call it a thamen, you know, the thumb up for amen. So uh, let's do that as we get into God's truth, uh, looking at Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 down through 21. Um, and I'm going to hope to read this without my glasses, okay? Uh, let's see here. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15, down through verse 21. The Bible says, See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. May God bless the reading of his word this Father's Day Sunday. Right here in the middle of the book of Ephesians, the letter that the Apostle Paul wrote through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to the church at Ephesus, we find how we can wisely fulfill our role as father. We find how we wisely can fulfill our role as followers of Jesus. And so um, we have a dual application with the message God laid on my heart today, specifically fathering wisely. And then generally, as believers following Jesus, walking wisely in a practical way, applying God's truth in our lives so that we can glorify God and be a blessing to those that God brings into our lives. And so um, when you look at the book of Ephesians, it is very plain to see the tender love that Paul had for the church at Ephesus. God had used him to plant that church in the city of Ephesus, uh, and Ephesus was a a, a central hub type city where a lot of trading all around the world came in and went out. And so Ephesus was a great place to reach people for Christ and plant a local New Testament church. And so uh, after leading several of the, the citizens of Ephesus to Christ, uh, Paul was able to form them into a local church and he was able to lead and guide them uh, and had a tender love for them that was apparent. And, you know, Paul loved all the people that God called him to reach, uh, but you can see how much he cared for this church and wanted to see them uh, experience God's greater blessings in their faithfulness, uh, glorifying God. And so uh, when you get to uh, chapter 5, he's giving practical exhortations with practical doctrine so that they can live their everyday lives for God's glory. And he begins to get into different roles, and later on he gets into the role of husband and wife and how a Christian marriage, in the truest sense of the term, is a picture of Jesus Christ and the church. Uh, but as he's speaking these truths here in verses 15 down through 21, we see him encouraging us how we can father wisely and walk wisely in a crazy world uh, as the days continue to get more and more evil until Jesus returns. And so um, when you look at verses 1 down through verse 7, uh, you see him giving practical truths about being, in general, followers of God and how to, through the love of Christ, follow Jesus and be a blessing to others. Then he talks about uh, the differences between light and darkness, and that as a believer in Christ, uh, whether we're a father, a mother, or a son, or a daughter, uh, we are all, as believers in Jesus, children of light. Uh, and we want to walk and live in the light, 
and we want to exercise righteousness in the light. A lot of evil that's going on is happening after dark in our culture and society now because those that are evil love darkness because their deeds are evil. Uh, well, we're not to be that way as followers of Christ. We're to be children of the light. And then so he makes the transition. Because you're a follower of God, because you're a child of the light or children of the light, See then, verse 15, that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. And so uh, I ask this theme question, how do we father wisely? Dads, how do we father wisely? As we ask that theme question, we see Paul showing us through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit in practical truth and practical doctrine how we can do just that how we can father in a wise way that gives glory to God through our God-given role as the leader of our family unit and the leaders in our church family and the leaders in our community and our world at large. And so uh, how do we father wisely? Number one, by being careful all around in all facets of our lives, in all our relationships from our spouse to our kids, our grandkids and beyond. Uh, We need to be careful all around. And that's what's captured in verse 15. See then that you walk circumspectly. That English word circumspectly tied to its Greek word. uh, When you look at the prefix there, circum, it literally means all around. Uh, You could even almost say like 360, all around, okay? That's what circum means, all around. And, and so when you, when you capture it completely, that circumspectly, it means that we are to be constantly vigilant and careful all the time. Um, and I want to share with you a contrast. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 16, Solomon says this, A wise man feareth and departeth from evil, but the fool rageth and is confident. You say, well, why are you bringing that verse into, into the mix here? Well, when, when you look at that practical verse of Scripture from Proverbs, a wise man feareth. Uh, a lot of men don't like to sh- show that they're afraid or that they have fear. Uh, it's okay to be fearful. It's what you do with that fear that matters. Uh, courage, a good definition of courage is fear under control. Um, and so uh, every day we have to put faith in the Lord Jesus Christ over our fears Uh, that are even real or imagined in our everyday lives. Um, A wise man feareth. What's he fear? He doesn't fear that God's going to, you know, zap him. He doesn't fear maybe even that, um, you know, things are going to happen that are beyond his control to bring damage or danger, even though those things can happen. Uh, He's trusting in God with his life. A wise man fears the consequences of evil. That's what a wise man fears. A wise man looks forward circumspectly, looks all around circumspectly, being careful and alert, and is able to judge righteously behaviors that are evil and the consequences that they might bring or could bring should the evil be embraced or or carried out in their life. And so because we fear the consequences of evil, uh, God working and being forced to work on us rather than he working in and through us, a wise man fears and then departs from the evil and moves closer to God or in God's righteousness or in his direction. But the Bible says the fool rageth and is confident. Uh, We've heard sayings and analogies, pride goeth before destruction, uh, and pride is the stone over which many people stumble. Um, The foolish tend to be prideful and they rage And they're confident to their own demise and to their own hurt. And so uh, we need to be wise. Even Jesus captured uh, in his earthly ministry what Paul is reinforcing here when Jesus himself said in Matthew 10, 16, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Um, It captures what Paul is encouraging us to do by being careful all around. So if we're going to father wisely, as followers of Christ, if we're going to walk wisely in a right relationship with Jesus, we need to be careful all around. Now, here you go, dads. I'm going to give you something right now that I want you to get. If you don't get anything else, get this. If you're going to father wisely, you must 
You must, you must decide every day to walk with Jesus. If you're going to father wisely, dad, walk with Jesus. Because the more you walk with Jesus, the more it's going to encourage your wife to walk with Jesus. The more consistently you walk with Jesus, the more your sons and your daughters are going to walk with Jesus. The more you walk with Jesus, the more your grandkids are going to choose to walk with Jesus consistently in their lives. And so on and so on. So bottom line here, fathering wisely is walking with Jesus. And that means being alert all around to walk with Jesus in every facet, in every phase, in every chapter, every season of your life as the God-ordained leader of your family unit. And then your church family and your community and beyond. God wants you to be careful all around. Guys, let's be vigilant. Let's be alert. Let's be watching so that we can avoid evil, help our wives and kids and family and church family and community to avoid evil, and to live righteously in a crazy world for the glory of God and our blessing as we seek to help others believe in Jesus as well. And so we need to be watching at every turn and every step, hyper-vigilant, because we know that God desires us to be ready to live for him, to live right, be right, do right, and think right for God. So that's point number one. If you wanted to sum it up, you could say this. Dad, if your kids were writing you a note based on these scriptures, dear dad, bring your A-game. Bring your A-game, dad. You know, there's times when we're not at our best as dads. There's times where I'm not at my best as a pastor for the church family. I'm not at my best as a dad to my son and my daughter. But you know what? God wants me to strive to bring my A game as much as possible. And my prayer is that I bring my A game consistently enough that my son and my daughter will know, love, and serve Jesus in their life as well. You know, I'm thankful to be a dad. I thank God that he's blessed me with three kids, two still with us and one who's already in heaven. I thank God for Connor and Keeley, and I thank God that they bring joy into my life. There's a lot of ways they bring joy into my life. Um, you know, I get a kick out of how my kids like to mimic and imitate me and get a laugh at my expense. I'll tell you what, my son has me down. He can, he can mimic me in such a way, he makes me laugh, and you know, and then I, and then I, shut it down, you know, eventually. But, uh, you know, I love that even my daughter will come out with things, you know, dad would say this or dad would, would do that. And it's just hilarious. And I think, wow, man, uh, my kids have me pegged. Well, what I enjoy about that is my kids have watched and they have learned and they've watched and they've listened and they see and they know dad's not perfect. They know dad's a sinner saved by grace. But they know dad loves Jesus and desires to walk with him. And they know dad loves mom. And he's not going anywhere. And they know dad loves them. And is going to do all he can to, to help set the table for them to live their lives for the honor and glory of God as well. And I rejoice that my kids are a, a blessing and not a burden. You know what? I rejoice that I have a daughter who's with Jesus. Some of you dads might have a son or daughter that's already with the Lord. I feel you today. Our daughter Angel hopes with Jesus because that was God's plan for her. We celebrated her 11th birthday on Tuesday. We sent balloons up to heaven. But you know what? I thank God that heaven's even... That much sweeter because I got a daughter waiting for me to get there. And what joy that's going to be. And, but at any rate, I thank God that my kids, through the wonderful gift of procreation, have made me a dad. And I take that very seriously. Dad, do you? Because it's a wonderful, wonderful role that God has given you to father your children wisely and then your grandchildren to know, love, and serve Jesus to walk with Jesus because they see you walking with Jesus as well. You know, when Connor was just a little guy, we were still living in Florida. I heard the song by Phillips, Craig, and Dean. 
that captures the essence of a godly father with a son. And I can't remember the exact title of the song, but I remember uh, the punchline. Lord, I want to be just like you because he wants to be like me. I remember thinking, Lord, help me be more like Jesus so that my son who wants to be like me will also want to be more like Jesus. And you know what, guys, dads, that'll happen if you decide now you're going to walk with Jesus and you're going to be careful all around. So, dear dad, bring your A game because God wants you to bring it. Your kids need you to bring it. Bring your A game all the time and God will bless you with wise fathering. Second point we see here is in verse 16. So how do we father wisely? By using every opportunity for the righteousness of God. Uh, You look at verse 16 here. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. You know, Jesus predicted that the world's only going to get crazier right before he comes back. We're seeing crazy things happen. And things are getting crazier in a culture and in a, a secular society globally that has continued to marginalize or minimize, I should say, to minimize Jesus and marginalize humanistic philosophy in all facets of life. And yet, God wants us to use every opportunity in our role as a father. God wants us as followers of Christ in general to use every opportunity in our lives for the righteousness of God, redeeming the time, using time wisely because time is running out. Evil and evil becoming more and more pronounced in our world and in our lives today is only hastening the judgment of a holy and righteous, just God. And so God says, redeem the time because the days are getting progressively evil. What's what's Paul saying here? Well, again, if you're If your child was looking at this truth and saying, hey, dad, I'm going to write you a letter. Dear dad, bring your A-game. Dear dad, know the times that are most important. Know the times that are most important. That's what verse 16 is saying. Redeem the time because the days are evil. Take full advantage of every opportunity with every moment and every day to make it count for the righteousness and glory of God and for the blessing of your kids, your grandkids, and others. Use the time wisely. Know the times that are most important. Sometimes, Dad, we struggle knowing the times that are most important. You know, I'll give you an example. The times that were most important were the times that I helped coach my son's ball team. The times that were most important were definitely uh, the times I helped coach my daughter's sports teams. Those times were definitely more important than The time sitting in front of the TV watching the Phillies try to win in futility after the 2008 World Series championship. That was definitely a cool memory. But you know what? It was definitely more important for me to invest my time in my kids playing baseball than enjoying watching the Phillies may or may not lose in a game that nobody's going to remember two nights later. You see, that's just giving you an example. Dads, we struggle with that. We do struggle with that. I struggle with it too. But you know what? If we struggle with it, we need to ask God to give us the grace to know the important times and know the difference between the times. So what are you getting at? Well, you know, there are times we need to be gentle and we're harsh. There are times we need to be loving and we're distanced. There are times when we struggle understanding what's appropriate and and what we need to do as a dad to intervene or to direct or redirect or to counsel. There are times where we get it mixed up. We let anger get the best of us when we should be embracing love and patience. We let frustration frustrate our kids when we should be exercising long-suffering and forbearance. You know, Dad, if you're struggling with that, knowing the difference of times and knowing what times are most important in your relationship to your wife, your kids especially, ask God to give you the grace to know the difference in the times, and God will do just that. 
so that you can redeem the time because the days are getting evil, so that you can look back and say you made the best of the times you had training your children to know, love, and serve Jesus before they launched out to establish their own family units and replicate what you demonstrated to them in your family as they start their own hopefully with Jesus at the center of their family because you kept him there as the leader of your home. And so if we're going to father wisely, we've got to be careful all around. We've got to use every opportunity for the righteousness of God. And then number three, we can father wisely by knowing God's will. When you look at verse 17, wherefore be not unwise but understanding what the will of the Lord is. We're seeing a direct correlation between being wise and being unwise, and the hinge of it, the difference maker, is knowing the will of God. Guys, dads, the more you know God's truth, his word, the more wise fathering you're going to impart to your children and your grandchildren, period. This book teaches right from wrong. That which is right, is wisdom it's wise that which is wrong is foolishness it's evil it's sinful and there's no better time to be getting into god's word than the crazy days we're living in now we need we need to know god's truth discerning through god's truth and prayer we see here so that we can help our kids and our grandkids to do the same, to know the difference between right and wrong so they can choose right and be blessed and avoid choosing wrong and suffering grievous consequences, uh, some consequences of which last an entire lifetime. And so we need to discern God's truth and we need to do so so that we can choose right and live right and then model that to our wives and our kids and our grandkids and others. We need to see the biblical worldview and perspective. That's what's so awesome about knowing God's word. The more you know God's word, the more you can understand and see the big picture, God's big picture for the entire world. Um, There's no better time to immerse yourself in knowing God's truth than right now, Dad. With all the crazy we got going on, with every, everywhere you turn in your life and in, in our culture and in our society, even our country and, and all the media, uh, Everybody's pushing their narrative. Well, guess what? Knowing God's narrative helps you know the difference between the wrong narratives of humanistic philosophy and secularism and knowing God's narrative for being right with God and living right for his glory and leading your family to do the same. And so we need to know God's will. And The more we know God's will, his truth, the more we can put our selfish will on the back burner, put God's will at the center and at the front, so to speak, of our marriage and our family unit and our church family and beyond, and God will bless our wise fathering. So, again, if your child was looking at this truth and writing you a note, dear dad, know God's narrative. No God's narrative. Hey, Dad, you know the narrative on NASCAR, right? Hey, Dad, you know the narrative on your favorite sports team, right? Hey, Dad, you know the narrative on hunting and fishing and boating and all these other things that are dear to you. But you know what? What your kids need you to know most is God's narrative. They'll figure out all the other narratives on their own. They need to know God's narrative. And the best place they learn it from is you, Dad, and me. As wise, godly fathers. So how do we do wise fathering? How do we have fathering that's wise and godly and righteous by knowing God's will? And then my final point is this. If we're going to father wisely, we do so by avoiding substances control. You go, wow, that seems a little out of place, doesn't it? It's really not. Look at the verse of scripture with me, verse 18. He says, and be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the spirit. Interesting that Paul uses a very real analogy. Getting drunk on alcoholic beverages. Allowing alcoholic beverages to begin to control you. 
You know, there's a lot of substances that you can introduce into your body that can begin to control you and that have adverse effects. But you'd be hard pressed to find one as far reaching and as troubling as drunkenness, getting drunk with alcoholic beverages. Um, there's plenty of scripture that says you should never touch your lips. I know a lot of Christians that think they can handle their liquor. I beg to differ. But you know what? What I'm getting at here is beyond just alcohol, there are other substances. We, we don't even have to talk about the illicit drugs. There's other substances that you can allow to control you, Dad, that's going to rob you of being a wise father. And they're tied to selfishness, your flesh, and lust. Some other substances, because substances represent, represent some things. And some of the things that we can allow to control us are other things, like our personal hobbies and interests. Other things, like money. Other things, like uh, toys uh, that we as adults like to have fun with and play with. Uh, and you can fill in whatever toy you're fond of. Uh, you know, oh, how about another one? Pornography which is a scourge for all men all over the globe. And while we're on that, guys, if you're given over to pornography, uh, you're sinning against your wife, period. You're sinning against your kids, period. And you know what else you're doing? You're rotting your brain physiologically and psychologically. It's been proven. Do a little research. You'll find it. If you're struggling with that, I'd be glad to help you in a loving way, get victory over that substance that's destroying your marriage and then has an adverse effect on your kids. All these substances, and Paul just uses drunkenness as one example, keep you from being a wise father. So dads, how you doing with that stuff? Are substances controlling you? Or is God through his Holy Spirit controlling you? Because that's what Paul's saying needs to happen. Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. How can you exercise godly fathering, wise fathering? By avoiding substances control. To be controlled by a substance is debauchery or excess. But being filled with the Holy Spirit of God is captured here with what Paul's saying. Being filled with Christ because you're seeking to walk with him by means of the Holy Spirit's control of your life. Dad, who controls you? Believers in general, who controls you? What controls you? Anything less than God through his Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit's indwelling power in your life, and you have problems. You have problems. Um, you know what's interesting is, he then uses verses 19, 20, and 21 to show what a spirit-filled life looks like. Um, and when you look at the original Greek, um, Paul is not saying the means by which you're feel, filled by the Holy Spirit. There are Christians that think they need to try to recapture the filling of the Holy Spirit uh, on a daily basis because it can come and go or it can be lost. No, the means by which you have the Holy Spirit of God filling you or indwelling you is the day you personally believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and were born again into his family through your personal faith in Jesus. But on a daily basis, we have to yield control of our life from self to God the Holy Spirit leading from within us so that we're spirit controlled or filled by the Spirit. And as we are filled by the Spirit, then we see the results of a spirit-filled life. The results are in verses 19, 20, and 21. What does the Holy Spirit's control in your life look like, Dad? Believer? This is what it looks like. Look at verse 19. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. You know, a lot of guys struggle with singing. A lot of guys struggle with, with having a tune in their mind and heart. Uh, you know, a lot of guys struggle with singing in church. Well, guess what? As we get ready to come back to worshiping here in God's house, and, and I'm excited this upcoming week to share with you our plan for returning to God's house as a church family. So be watching for that this week on the church Facebook page. Uh, but you know what, guys? We got to come back 
everybody, we got to come back into God's house wearing masks because we're going to honor the protocols of our earthly government because that's what the Bible tells us to do in Romans 13, verses 1 and 2. But you know what's neat is we'll all have masks on. So you know what, guys? Man, you can bust out with that singing because you're going to be muffled a little bit. Not everybody's going to be able to hear that you're off key or not in tune. I always said I like singing, uh, but mine isn't a, a beautiful sound. Mine's a joyful sound. Amen? And when you're filled with the Spirit and you're sensitive to His leading and guiding, hey, man, God can use a hymn that grabbed you in worship Sunday, and you can be humming it, you can be whistling it uh, as you're going about your day because you're carrying that song of truth in your heart because you belong to God and he's your heavenly father. And as a godly father, you're doing your best to share that fathership with your family and others in your life. And so... It looks like a joyful singing spirit, verse 19 teaches us. It also looks like a thankful and prayerful spirit uh, in verse 20. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, we pray in the name of Jesus when we end our prayers, and that's captured with a prayerful spirit and a thankful spirit. We give thanks to God in our prayers a lot. But I want to point something out here. The King James Version has the word things there, and that can be a little misleading because when you look at the original Greek of verse 20, what Paul is saying there really is giving thanks always for all unto God and the Father. So what are you getting at? He's speaking about giving thanks to God for everybody in your life. Dad, are you thankful for your wife? Dad, are you thankful for your kids? Granddad, are you thankful for your grandkids? If you are, you should be thanking God for them every day. And that thankfulness will turn into more righteousness and godliness in your God-given roles as husband, as father, as leader in your family unit, and as a leader of the people of God in the family of God in your local church, and even in your community. And so what's interesting is Paul is talking about giving thanks always for everyone in your life, starting with your immediate family outward. And what's interesting, the word things in the English there is a little misleading because here, here's the thing. You ready? Here's the thing. Things are used. People are loved. But you know what? The entire globe over, Satan has duped the globe, all mankind, with the lie to reverse that. I just said to you, things are used, people are loved. But you know what Satan has our world thinking? People are to be used, things are to be loved. So dad, do you have the righteous order with that? Use things, but love people. And go against the lie of Satan that a lot of other men and people all over the world have bought into. And so, a joyful singing spirit, a thankful and prayerful spirit are all the results of being filled with the Spirit on a daily basis. Seeking to live for God and His glory. And then verse 21 gives us a submissive and respectful spirit. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. When you look at the original Greek, it represents submitting yourself to your wife and your kids, to other people out of reverence for Jesus. Do you reverence your wife because you reverence Jesus, dad, husband? Do you reverence your kids and submit to them? So how do I submit to my kids? By getting on the floor and playing with them when they're little. That's how you reverence and you submit yourself to the needs of your kids. By doing things that your wife sincerely needs you to do, not, out, not begrudgingly, but because you love her and you reverence her. We struggle with that. We really do. But P Paul is saying here, when you're led by the Spirit, you're willing to submit yourself to your wife 
and to your kids in your, in your family unit. Um, yeah, for guys that are independent, for guys that want to look like they have it all together, for guys that don't want to show weakness, for guys that need to be strong, you know, and for guys that don't cry, hey, let me tell you something. One of the greatest things you can do, Dad, for your family is to let them see you cry. John eleven thirty five. 35, Jesus wept. If our God could weep and cry tears, you can too. Your kids need to see you do that. So, we want to be strong. A lot of guys think, yeah, you know, think they're all that in a bag of Doritos. And then there's that country song that just blew that all away. You know, yeah, I'm the man of the house till she gets home. I love that old country song. It's so funny. But you know what? We need to be willing to submit to our wives, put their needs above our own. We need to be willing to submit to our kids and put their needs above our own. Why? Because we reverence Jesus Christ. And you know why we reverence Jesus Christ, Dad? Because we are walking with and in Jesus so that we can be wise, godly, righteous fathers for our kids, our grandkids, for the kids in our church, for the people in our community, and the world at large. That's what it looks like to be spirit-filled and not controlled by substances and some things that become more important to you than following Jesus in your everyday life. You see, dads, this is how we father wisely in this present world. So I want to ask you this question today, dad, on Father's Day 2020. Who are you walking with? Jesus? Or the world. Hey, believer, because this is equally applicable to walking in Christ and walking wisely. How are you walking today, my dear believer in Christ, my dear friend? Dads, how is your fathering today? Granddads, how is your grandfathering today? If you look back with regrets, Give them to Jesus. Put them under the blood and resolve to be a wise father. Resolve to be a godly father. Resolve to be a righteous father to the best of your ability. And watch God bless your life, your marriage, your kids, your family, your grandkids, and your life. God, give us all the grace to father wisely according to the truths of Ephesians chapter 5. And I want to say this. Let's remember, let's remember to tell dad happy Father's Day today. Let's focus on his strengths, not his weaknesses. Let's celebrate the gift of God he is to us in our family. And let's Let's share that with him today. And all of us, including dads, let's remember to tell our Heavenly Father today, Happy Father's Day. And God give us all a Happy Father's Day as we continue to father wisely and as all of us continue to follow Jesus.
Dad. Hey, Dad. I want to be rich and good looking. I want to be rich and good looking. I'll need you to challenge me. I'll need you to challenge me to be rich and good works. To be rich and good works. I'll be focused on building my career at all costs. I'll need you to show me how to put my family ahead of work. I'll seek my own comfort and joy. I'll seek my own comfort and joy. I'll need you to teach me to honor God. I'll need you to teach me to honor God with my time and resources. I'll want to avoid hard conversations. I want to avoid hard conversations. I'll need you to show me how to speak the truth in love. In love. I'll find myself wanting to please the crowd. I'll find myself wanting to please the crowd. I'll need you to remind me that I should obey God. That I should obey God. I'll look for happiness in many different places. I'll need you to show me that joy is found in following Christ. I want to treat girls how the world tells me to. I need you to show me how to honor them with all my actions. I'll find myself stuck in bad habits. I'll need you to show me the way out. I'll need you to show me the way out. I'll need you, Dad. I'll need you, Dad. I need you, Dad. I need you, Dad. To point me toward Christ when no one else will. To point me to Christ when no one else will.